And we begin our news tonight with a disturbing look at what's happening in homes right here in the Permian Basin. In a News West 9 exclusive, we discovered exploited migrants are being brought across the border and ending up trapped in what is called a stash house. Sammy Steele investigates. This is West Texas. <laughs> Land that's filled with wide open spaces rich amounts of oil below and a sky that looks like it can go on for just about forever. <laughs> but this is also West Texas. Land that stretches over 500 miles along the U.S.-Mexico border. We've, we've seen an increase in uh, people coming across the border and our apprehensions are up. As of May this year, nearly 930,000 people have been apprehended at the border. To put that number in perspective, almost half that number were apprehended in 2018. With a record high number of migrants coming into the U.S., Border Patrol is also seeing an influx in stash houses, a home or building used to smuggle people or drugs. These individuals pay uh, an amount to be smuggled into the United States. The cartels smuggle them in and then take them to a, either first to transport them, and that's where it starts. They transport them in tractor trailers, pickup trucks, and in these awful conditions, and they pack them in there and then get them to a facility, a stash house, a stash warehouse, a location where they hold these individuals. Every day here in Pinto Canyon, traffickers promise migrants that it's just a short hike to get to America. Well, behind me here, those mountains, that's Mexico. And all of this vast, mountainous, dangerous terrain must be traveled through in order for these migrants to get to the United States. It's a dangerous and scary situation, not only for these migrants, but also putting our border protection and border patrol agents at risk. The transnational criminal organizations are exploiting the opportunity of a, uh, of a so, sort of more open border at this point, and they know that our agents are, are absolutely um, doing their best, but we have limited folks uh, and equipment out in the field, so. We can't be everywhere, so when they do get folks through, this is where a lot of them end up. Davis tells me these transnational criminal organizations, cartel members, go into cities and villages across Mexico and Central America to recruit people, giving them a fake promise that for $11,000, they can get them to America. A lot of people that end up in stash houses uh, have been exploited from the time they left their home country until the time that they get there and even beyond. These traffickers, or as the agents refer to them, coyotes, have little to no regard for how these migrants are treated. A lot of sexual exploitation happens with, uh, with the, the folks that are coming across. Um, they may be extorted for additional money, uh, and if they can't come up with the money or they're returned, if, let's say they're immediately captured and returned, and they still owe the organization some money, they may be forced to now become the drug mule and bring, let's say, 60 or 70 pounds of marijuana across the U.S., not realizing that when they're apprehended with that much marijuana, uh, the likelihood is they will spend decades in jail. And they're in uh, horrific conditions. Uh, there's no air conditioning, there's no food, there's no water. Uh, they just hold them there like a commodity and they stash them there until they distribute them to the rest of the country. And they're going everywhere, everywhere in our country. 12 stash houses have been taken down in the Big Bend sector since October. While Customs and Border Protection officers can't disclose the specific addresses of stash houses, they can tell us they have found them in Presidio, Midland, and Actor County. Sheriff Mike Griffiths witnesses firsthand the work of human smugglers in his own county. We did have a, 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 a house out in West Odessa. We, we, uh, we assisted the uh, Border Patrol and, and HSI on uh, uh, entering that residence. We did find several individuals in there. Uh, the individuals that uh, were in charge of the location were were arrested, and uh, and uh, you know it's. I'm, I'm sure there's probably more of them. As for who's in these stash houses, 
Well, it varies. We don't know who they are. They might just be migrants. They might just be economic migrants, people that just want to come over to work. But, but in the same, uh, uh, the, the other side of the token, it could be individuals there that are wanted for crimes, uh, prior deports that have, are aggravated felons. We could have individuals from special interest countries that are here uh, that have terrorism uh, links to them. People from Yemen, from Bangladesh. We had uh, just a couple of months ago, two Yemenis uh, caught by CBP. Uh, last, a couple of months ago, 11 Iranians caught in Arizona. These individuals come with a different ideology uh, to possibly cause us harm, and they might also be in these stash houses as well. Griffiths Davis and Avila believe not enough people understand how stash houses and issues relating to the border are right here in our own backyard. Midland and Odessa are very close to the border uh, transportation-wise. It only takes a few hours to get a vehicle up to Midland, Odessa, blend into the city, and, uh, and take people, you know, to a stash house or wherever they're going to take them. In Pinto Canyon, in far west Texas, I'm Sammy Steele, News West 9. Sammy, thank you. We did reach out to the Midland Police Department and the Midland County Sheriff, but they refused an interview about this story.